Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, this is Evan from Plex Guide. So we're here to talk about NZB Git. So again, this is part of the 7.5 upgrade series where containers are being upgraded, looked into, and pretty much um, kind of clearing out everything in the wiki just to make life a little bit easier for you. So NZB Git is an awesome program to use. Long story short, basically it uses news groups in order to obtain your content, does all the processing, and either talks to sonar, radar, lidar, or any other program that decides to talk to it. So what we're gonna do is from scratch here, like having pre-staged anything. I just install this so I can run into any kind of issues that uh, that you know I would come across or you would come across and it might help me um, explain a few more things for you. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look, go ahead and this again, this is 7.5 right now. 7.4 is perfectly fine if you're on that. I'm gonna go ahead and load up PGBox, which has a series of containers which you can install. So here you can see that we make life a little easy for you. You basically can just queue your programs and then just mass deploy. So we're gonna go ahead and do NZB git. Check that out. And then we're gonna type, uh, let's do sonar. So the focus is not on sonar, but it's just enough of a configuration for the two programs to talk to each other. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and type deploy. Uh, it's gonna ask what version and because I'm doing multiple programs, it's asking about cron jobs for demo purposes, no. So right now, it's basically executing the programs um, for installation. So NZB gets kicking in right now, and then um, Sonar will kick in. So uh, I was a big um, Zab NZB D guy, uh, mostly because of when I first used uh, news groups, the, the, the design of it appeared cleaner to me and NZB Git looked very dry. But over the course of time, I've preferred NZB Git. And the reason I say that is because in using the GCE edition, if you have like massive things uh, downloading or going on, uh, I recognize it doesn't crash. Zab NZBD doesn't really crash either. It crashes more on the Windows. So that's where partially I get my bias from. But uh, when it comes to file handling and many other things, NZB Git has gotten most of the files done correctly for me. And again, your experiences could be different. So, you know, it's not bad to try to both, you know, different programs. So right now, this is uh, on a test machine, so I don't have a domain set. And this is just a trash um, server, so it's nothing set. So I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to pop this in. So this is for Sonar. And then there's one also for NZB Git. So let's bring up Sonar. And then we're also going to bring up NZB Git, which is on port 6789. So Sonar is loading up. Then NZB Git's loading up. And when you purposely load NZB Git, I purposely have the password stripped and removed. So the first thing you should do is put a password on it. That would be my recommendation, as with any other program. So Sonar is going to talk to NZB Git. NZB Git is what does the downloading. Sonar, radar, lidar is what does the management. So NZB Git needs to be properly configured. The good thing is, is when you launch this, we pretty much set up a, a script that kind of like rewrites a lot of things for you. So you don't really have to mess with the paths. Everything's going to be taken care of for you. Um, if you want to see where the data ends up getting stored and transferred, you just type CD off, or my bad, CD mount, and I'm on a little bit of a slow connection. So it's kind of bad when the terminal lags, right? CD mount NZB git. And then you can type to LSLA. And then you can see that all your files are here. And they're all J modded and you know 755,000,000. So permissions are straight, everything's good to go. So this is where your stuff's gonna queue up at, completed and complete. So if you got files stuck somewhere, it's mostly like sitting in incomplete over time. We have a script that kind of runs in the background and trashes files that are old after a certain amount of time. But if you find files just sitting in completed or incomplete and your space, disk space is running out, you know, just check out the disk space there because, you know, sometimes trash tends to be left behind. Okay, so um, what's the best way to go about this? Just to show you a little bit of demo purposes, technically when you're setting up Sonar or any other program, you're going to look for like a thing called like download client, something along those lines. So for Plex Guide, yes, you can enter the domain and everything, but what it's the easiest way, and definitely because of like AppGuard, uh, which closes your ports. So for example, in the name here, I can type NCB git, right? Now we can go ahead and do this. Right now there's no username and password. And 
right now it's not talking because it is not local see so we're gonna do 195 201 22624 but again the problem you're gonna run into with this is is that if the ports are closed like from AppGuard this is gonna fail so in general this is not something you want to ideally have set up across the internet because it's just another point of entry that you know people can get into so what you should do like in for the other programs in FlexGuide where you can relate to just type nzb git I mean uh yeah nzb git and that's it it's, it appears strange but it's docker it just it just works you see so just type nzb git don't worry about 127 don't worry about all that stuff unless you're specifically having to communicate that way but don't forget that when you change your username and password you got to fill this in so we're going to go ahead and set up nzb git and even the navigation kind of gets me a lot so you only have to do very minimal things here and we're just going to kind of run through a quick kind of like run through so if you notice here if you do a default installation these paths are not like this I, I set up the docker container and everything to write out a certain way so things can load in certain places so you're not going to have to mess with the paths the paths are pretty much set old old school og plex guide yeah we literally had all the paths kind of like written out in the guide if you mess up one thing everything would go bad for you just imagine your server like downloading and it never processes anything and it just backs up yeah it's just horrible okay so here is where your um, new servers will go so yes I do you know put it on a site and I do spell it out but uh, news hosting is the the, the number one uh, client I use that and usenet server and the reason I say for news hosting is because it gives me the most completion like I can use a solo and it's topped out nearly by a gig by itself they've never canceled accounts and I'm, I'm just stressing this because I probably went through like 20 different usenet servers and I just found, and there's a lot of resellers, but the, the people who run NZ, I mean, uh, news hosting do a really great job. So if you, when you go to Plex Guide right here, this may take a while to load. Again, slow internet connection where I'm located right now. So if you go to the GitHub and if you go to the Wiki um, or like other places, just click here and PG members get a discount. So it helps out. And then what normally what you would do is you create a name here. So it'd be like, we're, and we're not really going to connect to this. So, <laughs> um, but just to kind of give you an idea of what you're going to be doing, what's expected of you. So you could call it like news hosting, right? The server levels, I don't even mess with this anymore. Back in the day, this was important when you didn't have unlimited accounts. Like you had like maybe an account that had like a lot of data, but would have a high failure rate so you would have a thing called blocks so if you bought block accounts like accounts that kind of like filled in missing data you would want to set the level higher because if they if they were first and you bought like 50 gigs for like 10 bucks you're gonna be out quite a bit of money so normally most of the cheap servers would be at the lowest level to pull in and then the block accounts are filling so you never really need to mess with this anymore don't need to mess with that you don't need to mess with server groups so like in here this is where you would like for example with news hosting you would type news.newshosting.com that I know off the top of my head the port should either be 563 or 443 either one you can use when you sign up do not use port 119 or other ports because they are insecure a lot of people have sometimes asked me or even on the forums hey do I need a VPN with NZBGit you don't the reason is is because your data is communicating over a secure port even with your ISP and everything the only way your data can ever be compromised is if your box is well open to everybody or you know people can just access your box directly right now like this is a demo okay so right now you're gonna edit your username and password so um, you know if your assigned username is uh, you know you just do Plex guide that's not what you're normally gonna have and then you do the password Plex guide never again never good to do the same thing but this is just demo you want to turn encryption on so there is nothing I can do for you here so when you enter your stuff please do not forget this if this is 563 or 443 you're gonna turn the encryption on if you don't turn it on it's gonna give you constant errors and there just been times where I even knew this and I, I would forget and it would just drive me up the wall for a while so what NZB get I believe you get 30 connections don't the, the connections are misleading some websites are like hey you have 50 connections you paid as much right if you get four connections and they're all downloading where you're getting a max speed of like one gig well that's all that matters you can have all the connections you want but if they're all crap they suck right so nzb get uh, i believe it's either 25 or 30 so if it's like 25 do like 22. do like three under four under so if it's like 30 then you know you do something like 27. if you're like at 10 you would do something like seven 
And the reason you never put the exact number of connections is because sometimes the connections do not disconnect. And then what happens is when you connect again, they're like news hosting or whoever you're using will automatically kind of like kind of like lock you out not real not really you but your program will lock you out for like a minute or two and the reason is is because it thinks you're trying to use more connections so by staying like at 27 26 like three or four hundred you're good you can leave this at zero so um you, you don't have to really worry about the retention check the only reason you're going to ever put a number here is maybe because you want something uh, to to only be so old to me that would make no sense because usually um they're uh, zabenzi i mean uh uh, sonar radar they're pretty good about like upgrading your files so you never really mess with this and that's pretty much it so you would do save all changes um and again this is not um something we're actually setting up here so let's see here i'm sorry the connection is just a little bit slow i'm gonna go ahead and pause this real quick Oh, there it, okay, it looks like it's coming up. <laughs> okay. So I just wanted to kind of explain it to you. To you, may not seem like a lot of information, but it was stuff I struggled with. Because when I went through all these options, I'm like, what is it that I really need to know? And, and there's just a lot of things that I understand. Now here's security. This is where you can uh, set that username and password we were talking about earlier. So if I set, you know, the username and password to be uh, Plex Guide, and then the password flex guide, that's something you would never do, plus you would do a stronger one. Leave this alone, do not mess with this. If you change the port, you're not gonna be able to access it. Leave this on 000, the only time, the only reason you would change this is because, um, you know, if this is like on your local network, maybe that's all you wanna do, because you probably don't want other outside or whatever to get into uh, NZV yet. So leave this alone, leave that alone, put a control, uh, username and password, check it, because you don't wanna lock yourself out. Um, there is a config file, so um, let me see if I, I find it here. Let me see if it comes up. Password. Yeah, there you go right there. So if you ever lock yourself out of um, NZB Git, you will be able to, you can go to the file itself and do a nano and then edit the file here, edit the password or cat it to see what it is. So if you ever want to see where that file is located, You'll be like right there, CD. Uh, so you would normally type CD op uh, app data NZV git. If you're gonna manipulate the file, just replace the CD with uh, nano and then go ahead and change the password. I'll show you this because I had to do it one time. So if you uh, <laughs> if you find yourself locked out, you don't wanna do that. Okay, you could, I've never used this before, but if I don't know, maybe you got a second person you wanna let in, but you really don't want them to go crazy with your stuff. You can do restricted username and password. Um, you can leave this alone. You don't need to mess with this. Uh, yeah, so that's it for that. Categories. You don't have to do anything here. It does everything for you. So we rewrote it uh, in, in the load up. So obviously movies, TV, and music, and that's it. Everything just kind of points to these categories and they'll upload. RSS feeds, you're never gonna touch. Incoming NZVs. I've never had to mess with download queue. Um, I've always left this alone. So Plex Guide does rewrite this to 25,000 megabytes. What happens is um, if your disk gets to 25 gigs of space, it will pause. If you want this change this to zero, by all means you can, but it's not recommended. The reason for it is it's because if it goes too low and you got somebody transcoding, because remember your disk needs space for Plex, if you run out of this space, all your, a lot of programs are going to stop and Plex is going to take a mind dump on you. And there's just all kinds of bad things that happen when you run out of this space. So this is set at 25 gigs. If you have like a, a server with like only maybe like 60 gigs of data and you're not transcoding Plex, you can knock this down to about 10,000. But I would not go lower than that. Um, I always leave the history alone, the feed history. To, again, you can read up on this if you really care for it. Um, connections I never mess with. So you can leave that alone. Logging, if you want to do advanced logging, you can. I leave that alone. Scheduler, uh, Plex Guide by default will automatically restart the program when NZB Git boots up, so that's a plus. And it'll restart every hour and every half hour. The reason I don't do every 15 minutes or every five minutes is because um, in, in case your disk is just freeing up space. So I let a little bit of disk space free up. So it'll pause. 
if it is paused, it will unpause itself. So that's how you don't have to worry about anything. Check and repair, I leave alone. You could read up on this. Um, you can use extra CPU power to expedite some of the processing, but if you have a lot of things going on in uh, NZB Git, just leave it alone. You know, just leave the values alone. And that includes the unpack. So everything's kind of set up for you already. So um, we do have the direct unpack turned on for you. And extension scripts, we don't have anything here. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it here. So um, other than that, that's pretty much it for NZB Git. So um, just keep, like I said, keep in mind where the files download. Keep in mind that, you know, how to set it up. See, like right now, if I do a test, let me see, I don't think I did a save. So if I do a save all changes, this shouldn't work because remember we added a username and password. It should fail. Okay, should fail. <laughs> Murphy, right? Okay, reload, maybe that's what it is. But anyways, also too, you can also do zero, zero as a host thing if you want. But again, you can just leave it as NCB Git. So we've seen a lot of different things. Uh, let's see here. There you go, yeah, it's not working, so perfect. Okay, so other than that, I hope this information helps you out a little bit. If it did, you know, just please like, comment the video, uh, thumbs up, you know, all that good stuff, help us grow. I do appreciate the donations. I do appreciate people uh, chipping out of forms, assisting with the code, and it's, we just have this community because it's just a it's just a great learning process. Other than that, you have an outstanding day.